Good morning, everyone. It's Nancy Narden, and I'm sorry we're starting just a few minutes late here. You should be seeing a screen with a map on it of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, pretty soon we'll have our kickoff overview slide up, and that's what we'll be looking at. The first part of our call is always a conversation just to talk about what the challenge is uh, that we are going to be going over today. So first of all, let me just say that um, you know, I'm, we offer free resources like today's webinar. That's what we do at Smart Selling Tools, and it's designed to help people learn about tools that will drive revenue. And Thursdays are my favorite days because I get to hold this technology seminar every Thursday at 11 o'clock. And if you haven't signed up for the series, you can do that on our website. Um, you can sign up for individual ones, but if you sign up for the series, then you will automatically get a login invitation for each weekly seminar. And today we've got Matt, who is, um, I just thought I'd acknowledge a couple of people that are dialing in because it's fun to see everyone and where they're calling in from. So we've got Matt, who is a company president, I won't say company names, um, calling in from Arizona. Uh, that's, that's my alma mater. And we've got Haley, who is a CMO, calling in from New Brunswick, Canada. And Laura, a director of sales ops, calling in from Denver. But you know what? That's kind of representing the kinds of people that want to listen in. So, oh, and I can see Patty has joined us again. Thanks, Patty. It's great to have you back on the line. I know Patty is a sales um, consultant and sales performance improvement uh, kind of guru, if you will. So I'm glad that you could all join us, and I'd like to welcome everyone. And today I'm also excited because I have two special guests. The first is Jimmy Hooker, who you can see here on the slide now, and he is a UI UX designer at Badger. And you're going to get a glimpse of that UI and UX pretty soon here. And the second is Ken Buck, and Ken is the regional sales manager at Cavo Kerr Group, which is one of Badger's customers. So Jimmy and Ken, welcome to our show today. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to just say, for those who maybe weren't aware, um, Kerr Dental is the dental division of Danaher Corporation. And, and uh, Ken, I'll let you correct me if I get any of this wrong. But Danaher is a Fortune 500 medical device supplier. It's hundreds of Kerr reps use Badger Maps, and they've used Badger for over three years now. And we really get to have anyone on to talk about field sales apps. There's so much discussion about the growth of inside sales, but the reality is that many sales are in the field all day long, every day. And that's the case with Kerr, and that's what Badger is designed to help with. So, Ken, I want to thank you, first of all, for taking the time to talk to our audience about how you've equipped your reps with uh, Badger, and it, it's really valuable for others to hear from people that are willing to share their experiences. So I thank you uh, for that. And, and, no and in fact, yeah, why don't we just start by tell us about you? Sure. So thanks for having me on today, Nancy. Um, I've spent the last uh, 10 years in sales and sales management, and um, most currently for the last uh, six years, I've been put in a training capacity, and most recently, regional sales manager for Curve, and uh, like you had mentioned we service the dental sector and medical and um, you know the whole story about how Badger came about is it's pretty intriguing actually because we were looking for a very specific solution to a problem that you know we had in the field that we ran into every day and um, by working with uh, Jimmy and his team well with uh, as well as Steve Benson and some other folks internally at Badger um, we were able to really customize a solution to this need that we had and um, you know I'd be happy to jump into that now Nancy or if you want to get into that a little bit later in the, uh, the the webcast here I'd be you know happy to do that at your pace so you let me know the direction here that you'd like me to go sure yeah you bet and and I know that you've been using Badger for about three years and Badger probably isn't a whole lot older than that maybe a four-year-old company yeah. Jimmy, if you're not on mute, you can clarify that. Yeah, it's about uh, four and a half years. Okay, so uh, 
you know, I guess what, one of the things I'll point out is that there are some clear benefits with going to young with younger companies, and that is, <clears throat> you know, if you can tell that the technology is is good and it's got a good UI and it seems to have the functionality you want, it can be worth it going with a younger company because they really do listen to what changes their customer base wants. So let's get into this a little bit here, Ken. What was the trigger? And you've got all these field sales people. I'm sure, did you already have CRM as an example? Did you have some other tools already in place? Yes, yeah, so we did. Um, you know, what we were working with is Microsoft Dynamics, and that's really our internal CRM database that we use at Curve. Um, you know, one of the things that we would constantly run into is this concept of how do you take that data and how do you make that data a usable resource so that when a rep who is out in the field, right, because a rep isn't always behind the desk, especially the field reps, you know, how do you take that information and put that in a format that's easy to digest and easy to comprehend? And, and Nancy, you asked me about sales tools that we've had, you know, in the past. And, you know, some of the reps would try to come up with their own methods with things like street and trips. And um, I'm not even sure if streets and trips is even available anymore. Um, but it really wasn't an efficient way uh, to manage the territory and interpret the data in the sense that we wanted them to be interpreting it. So, you know, when, when Badger had came along, like uh, Jimmy mentioned, about four and a half years ago, they were really experimenting with this really cool technology, which obviously has progressed to this very robust platform over time. And, you know, they were able to bridge that connection of, I have this database and I have this information that I know that I need to digest, but if I was able to actually see this when I'm out in the field, that would be, you know, increasing our sales efficiency to the 10th power. And by using the, the mapping technology that they've been able to utilize in Badger, it's really given us a great idea of where these accounts exist. And, you know, like I mentioned, you have field reps who are out in the territory that aren't behind a desk all day. And let's be honest, when you're a sales rep, sometimes things fall through. We all do our best to schedule appointments, but, you know, when something does fall through, where do you go from there? Well, you're not going to really be able to pull up a, a spreadsheet and figure out exactly the, the fastest route um, from where you're currently sitting in a parking lot in your vehicle by looking at a spreadsheet. And, you know, Badger solves one of those areas as well by allowing a rep where maybe the day falls apart and they're able to then go go ahead and apply filters, which are all customized by Badger, and figure out, hey, this is a customer where I have a large variance, right? Maybe I need to be targeting this customer. Um, maybe there's a customer here that's buying four out of our ten brands, and uh, there's an opportunity with this customer while I'm in the immediate area to, to serve that need. Um, it gives us a, a finger on the pulse look, if you will, at how exactly we can maximize the efficiencies in the territory and quickly identify areas that we could cross sell you know other products from our company too. Um, let me let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. Uh, so when you say a lot of times you know something will fall through you're talking about an appointment yeah. so an appointment that they had set and then what do they do how do they make themselves useful during that hour is that what you were what you're talking about? Uh, yeah absolutely you know we all do our best um, as a sales team to schedule ahead of time and you know, what we ask is we like to make sure that they have, you know, at least four scheduled appointments per day. And, uh, you know, there's times where, you know, we're dealing with medical offices. Emergencies come up and, you know, they show up to the appointment and the doctor says, unfortunately, we can't see you today. We, we had an emergency case come through the door. And so, you know, that leaves the rep with maybe an hour to two hours of his time on his hands that he just got back. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of sitting, you know, in the, in the car or making cold calls inefficiently and doctors nearby, we could really interpret the data um, through the usage of Badger, where these accounts are sitting on the map in relation to where we are, to, uh, you know, target current customers and try to, you know, like I mentioned, cross-sell in brands that maybe we're not servicing but have a relationship with this customer already. All right, so let me jump into explain something here for the folks that are listening because they haven't seen the demo yet so they don't yet sure. know exactly what Badger is. But as an example, if your reps did not have Badger, um, what would they do? What would they have done in that situation? I mean, and were they carrying tablets all along or were they using laptops or were they trying to 
figure out who, where, who is where on their phones using Google? What did it look like before? Yeah, Nancy. So that's a that's a great question, and this is you know kind of evolved for us as a sales organization over time. And you know, I think before um, you know Apple came out with the tablet, and you know probably the most widely used tablet available. Um, you know, reps were doing things like printing off call lists, call, printing off spreadsheets from Microsoft Dynamics, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of these reps would take those sheets and plug it into the GPS. So the Garmin's came out, right? You could build a route mm -hmm. in, in the Garmin, and that kind of slightly evolved from that aspect into you know using some platforms like Streets and Trips, um, which of course had its challenges, and it wasn't a very fluid platform. You know, nor did it allow you to bridge the data in real time like Badger, Badger allows you to do, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more as we discuss this, but, um, you know, I think that part of the part of the selling point, I think, in equipping our sales force all with iPads had to do with Badger and the ability to, you know, visualize this territory in real time. Um, and so as that iPad technology evolved out in the field, you know, we were able to utilize some more of these tools so that we don't have, like I mentioned, the reps that, you know, are just cold calling uh, based on, hey, here's a medical office, here's a medical office, right? They're, they're really able to on the fly plan these days now in a more strategic manner than they ever have in the past. Okay, so now they have their data. I've heard you say this a couple times. So they have their data, and what that means by having their data handy with them is that, you know, you don't have to go through CRM on your laptop or if you have it on your tablet anymore. That's not really a good or easy interface, but what, if I understand it right, what Badger does is they will map all of those accounts onto a map so that people can click through to see their actual accounts and even some information about those accounts. Describe a little bit about how the CRM data shows up or, or integrates with Badger. Absolutely, and uh, you know that's the greatest part about it. And and really, when I've rolled this out to the sales team, when I was in the training capacity, Nancy, I explained it as you know this is putting lipstick on the pig, right? And I even had a diagram on the slide with a pig with lipstick. <laughs> and um, so what that means, you know, to you and to everybody listening is that when you look at this data in CRM, you know, there's a lot of solutions out there today for customer relationship management. But a lot of these solutions fall short in the sense of we have the data, right? But now how do we interpret this data? And, you know, that's that's precisely the problem that I think that we had faced is, you know, we prided ourselves on having some of the most high, you know, technology in the industry that we serve um, and a lot of the data intelligence that we, you know, housed on servers. But how do we take that information now as a sales rep who has, you know, many other things coming at them throughout the day and, and put this in a format to where they can digest it. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, what Badger does is essentially it takes all that data that's jumbled into the CRM system and it really puts it in a format that allows you to visualize it on the map. So for those of you who have maybe done uh, like a Google search for a restaurant to eat at when you're sitting in your car using Google Maps, for example, um, you'll see all the pinpoints fall down on the map and you know in relation to where you're sitting you know what might be a good option for you to you know go and eat at that specific restaurant and then also you know you can look at some of the reviews and things like that on the restaurant before you decide to go there and uh, that's probably the best analogy that I can give you in comparison to what Badger Maps does because you'll be related uh, to a certain geography sitting there in your car and you know, you might be asking yourself, okay, where, where is the best ROI now in terms of use of my time? And uh, while you apply a couple filters that integrate with our Microsoft Dynamics system, um, you might put, I want a high user of product X and uh, also a, a high user of product Y, um, but somebody who's not purchasing from product Z. And uh, what that'll do is only display the accounts on the map that satisfy that criteria. So it's not that you're just looking at your options, you're actually bridged in real time internally to your CRM system and you're looking at it in the sense of, okay, with this criteria that I have filtered, um, this would be my best bet if I wanted to maximize my efficiency in the field. And uh, I guess another analogy that to that would be if you use like a real estate app or like a realtor app or something along those lines, you know, when you're searching for a home, you're looking for, hey, I want something that's you know over 2,000 square 
four bedrooms and something that has over a half acre of land. Well, you're able to apply those filters and now on your map, you're only getting the homes displayed that fit that criteria, right? So that gives you a really targeted approach to, to how you're managing the territory. Well, that's great. And I suppose they could even do things like say, well, who are, in terms of my forecasts and where my opportunities are, show me the accounts in this area where I have business uh, opportunities in the next 90 days. Is that even a filter yeah. that you could use? Yeah, there's, there's things that are very similar to that concept. So when you talk about building a funnel and building the pipeline, you know, I, I touched on really on the fly what you would do in a situation where, you know, maybe you, you had something fall through. However, when you're looking at it from a strategy standpoint, there's a function that's built into Badger. And um, what, the, what the function is, is it's a routing feature. So it allows you to actually build a customized list of accounts that you're targeting in terms of your sales pipeline. And what Badger will actually do is map out the most efficient route for those days, for those accounts that you have within your funnel. And it'll also tell you, based on the current time, and, you, and when you look at this route, if you push it to your calendar, it'll tell you how far ahead or behind you are to even be able to, to accomplish seeing all those accounts in the day that you've chosen. So mm -hmm. it goes beyond that visualization. It goes you know, into that territory planning piece and execution to the point where when you're calling on these accounts and you're sitting in front of an account and you see the pinpoint on the map after you've executed the route you built, um, you're able to link right in to the CRM database and actually you know, create what they call as a check-in, right? So a check-in would really be recording any type of intel or, or data or information that you extracted as a result of that appointment. So it's really a two-way bridge, again, you know, using my analogy, right, the lipstick on the pig concept. Mm-hmm. Yep, and CRM can sure be a pig in the context <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> I would say so. Let's move away from the product a little bit, and before we turn over to Jimmy, let me ask you about some implementation kinds of questions. Sure. How much of a you know, stretch or a hassle was it to implement it? Was it hard to train? I think it sounds like maybe you got new iPads at the same time. What did that whole process look like? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, for the most part, it was it was relatively turnkey. Um, of course, I think some of the challenges that we had, if any, when, you know, Badger was in its infancy was building the back-end structure. And, uh, you know, once the back-end structure was built to handle Microsoft Dynamics, and uh, once they built a connector for Salesforce, um, really it's kind of plug and play. And it's just a matter of getting our data over in a format which their, which their uh, user interface can interpret and then therefore display on the map. So, you know, once we started to cut that, connect that bridge, as we'd call it, between the two companies, um, it was relatively fluid and, and very painless, I would say, on our behalf to, to implement the software. Okay. Did you run in, in, into any challenges? And, and, and let's, I know that it was at a time that Badger was, you know, still making changes. For instance, they yeah. didn't have the Dynamics integration sure. yet. And so a lot has changed since then. So right. and let's just say any surprises, and maybe it's good or bad surprises along the way. Um, you know, so I think if I was to, to call anything out, uh, you know, since we worked so closely with, um, with the team, with Jimmy, as well as, um, you know, Steve, and then also in, internally a couple of their engineers that to work on this, like Gotti, for example. We, um, you know, we, we tended to have such a close relationship, Nancy, that we at times maybe felt like Badger was part of our team. So we were trying to make Badger do things that, you know, were slated uh, in future releases that we wanted yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, 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 you know, the possibilities are really uh, endless for what they can do on their team. Um, but as a matter of priority, you know, there was there were certain things that, of course, we would have wanted yesterday. And and since we started that implementation, you know, over time, a lot of those features that were on our wish list are starting to, you know, now become live and available. So it just continues to improve. But I would say as a limitation when we first got started, you know, it was definitely some of those things. And it was a little bit of a manual process in the beginning as that connector was built. So, you know, we also had things um, on our side where we needed to clean up data. So, as you know, anybody that uses a CRM system, you know, mismappings occur and things like that. Um, so, it was, it was a lot 
do to our side as well of how do we clean up our data in a very um, thorough format that you know Badger's system is going to be able to interpret and and plot correctly, right? Makes so, sense. Yeah, so the, I, I would say if any challenges, those were the challenges we faced. But okay. you know, it, it was such a new technology to us, and it still is that it's um, you know everybody was just happy to be able to wow, I can see my accounts in real time. This is amazing. So there wasn't a whole lot of complaints. Yeah, that's what I always tell people when they say, well, you know, sales reps don't like technology. They don't want to use tools, and CRM is a perfect example of or proof of that. And I say, yeah, but what about the cell phone or email? Those are technologies, and they have right. no problem using those because you know why? It, it's helpful. It actually provides more value to them than it does, uh, you know, a downside. And so it sounds like it's something like Badger's kind of viewed the same way. And you have hundreds yeah. of reps that are using it. Yeah, approximately um, right around probably 170, I would say, okay. in the company okay. today. Um, you know, one of the things wow. that I'll I'll add to that, Nancy, is that. You know, when, we, when we're looking at potential candidates and we're looking at bringing somebody onto the team as a new hire, you know, one of the things we do is have them spend a day in the field with a current sales rep and, and really take a look at what a day in the life looks like, right? And, of course, the reps are using Badger on a daily basis. And when these candidates see this technology, um, because not every company right now has this technology, right? They're looking at it going, oh, my gosh, I wish that I had this today in the current role that I have, it would have made a world of difference for me. And um, you know, one of the most common pieces of feedback we get when we actually select these candidates to move through is how excited they are that we're so you know technologically advanced in our approach to you know sales prospecting and sales planning. Um, and a lot of that has to do again with the platform Badger that they reference. So interesting. You know, it's actually I, a recruiting tool or or I, a competitive recruiting tool. Yeah, I would say so. It's been a it's been a really good visual display for for reps who are evaluating coming over to our company. Great. Well, that's very helpful, and I think now if I know I'm really excited about diving in. I'm sure everybody else is too at this point. So, uh, Ken, we might have some questions pop up that sure. that you'd be the best to ask. But Jimmy, let's turn it over to you now. And again, this is Jimmy Hooker who. You know, I was responsible for, in good part, for the design. Um, take us through what it looks like and how it works. Sure. So give me just a second here. Let me switch over to the iPad simulator here. Okay, cool. Can you see that on your screen? Yep. Awesome. So uh, this is the Badger map. Uh, when you go ahead and log in, this is essentially what you'll see. Um, at the top left here is the visualize tab. Um, this is essentially you can sort things on the map uh, based on color. So this colorize accounts by field here, this would be whatever data that your company has. For instance, we've loaded some demo data in here, so we have stuff like sales year to date. So you can go ahead and click this, and it'll then uh, sort on the map your accounts by whatever data you have available for uh, your customers. So uh, in this case, that would be sales information, right? Um, and then you can filter that information on this tab here. So let's say we wanted to target companies that had, you know, sales of a minimum of, you know, 10,000 or something like that, right? Uh, we can go ahead and do that, and it'll update on the map, and it'll only show uh, accounts that are, you know, super relevant for what you're looking for, right? So this is kind of like one of the primary tools uh, to visualize and filter your accounts on the map. Um, and then if you click on these, you'll see this little card pop up here. You can either add to the route down on the bottom here, or you can navigate to the account. Um, if you want to see more detail, you can go ahead and pull it up here. And this will center the map on this location. And then you can scroll through and see all the details for this customer. You can see the location, which will show the uh, the location according to uh, Google Street View. Sweet. Um, yeah, it's really cool. And then uh, you can enter notes here, which are these. This is kind of like a little sales scratch pad, right? If you need to keep certain information top of mind for a customer, this is a great location to enter that kind of information. Okay. 
And then here we have the history of that account. And this is basically check-in history, right? So, you know, in most CRMs, you're familiar with the idea of being able to do like a check-in or act, add history to an account. This is really where you would do that. And for a lot of our customers, especially our larger corporate customers like Kerr, you know, we customize check-ins so that you have, you know, like this is a kind of a, a default one right here. But Kerr, for instance, has, you know, a lot of specific details that they want to make sure that reps enter when they visit a customer. And so what we'll do is we'll customize these check-ins so that they can enter that data and update it um, for every visit that they make or phone call or, or anything like that. Okay, so a check-in, in this example, this is customized for them, but or for whoever. So a check-in, would that then automatically have so many type log types? Yeah, so by default, we just include kind of like the standard, standard log types, right? Like meeting, yeah. phone call, email, letter. Um, most of the time, you know, when you're using Badger, it's, it's, it's based on, you know, where you're located, right? So most of them are going to be meetings. Um, but you might have a bunch of other details in here, right? Like, let's say, you know, you have who you met with, right? So we can pull in specific data from your CRM. Like, let's say you have, you know, multiple doctors at a location or um, you have specific products that you're trying to present to that, uh, that doctor or whatever the case may be. Um, you would be able to uh, customize this check-in so that those fields are, like, available to the rep in the field. And they can, instead of typing them in the meeting notes, they are actually selecting a preset um, okay. field that's that's pulled in from your from your CRM. So this might be something they do as soon as they arrive, right before they walk in, or it might be something after they've literally checked in and they're waiting for the office manager or the doctor to come out. They can start to fill in all this information. Is that kind of how it normally flows? Um, generally, people do check-ins after the meeting, so you might, you know, start it. Yeah, you might start it. Um, it's think of it like a log entry, right? Like you're you're logging a meeting with uh, the company that you're visiting. Okay. So um, generally, it happens afterwards. You know, based on kind of like what you presented and you know what you talked about and stuff like that. You'd enter the notes based on that, and it oh, allows you mean they like don't a really have good to record. Actually they don't have to actually open up their laptop and turn it on and make sure it's connected and then log into CRM and open up the record and all of that? No, no, no. Yeah, the whole idea of Badger generally is to make that whole process much, much easier, right? Like most CRMs were built, you know, more than a decade ago when kind of, you know, the smartphone revolution hadn't happened yet. You know, the whole idea of tablets was kind of like something that Microsoft was trying but hadn't really succeeded with. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, everybody's got a phone in their pocket now. Like, we want to make the whole process of field sales reps entering data in. Because, I mean, like, the biggest goal of a CRM, right, is that you want your reps to actually use it, right? A lot of companies, you know, build these, or like, or implement these these large CRM systems. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's great for, you know, the internal team. But then the, the guy out in the field or the girl out in the field, um, you know, that's actually trying to... Um, you know, enter in data, it's it's kind of such a hassle that they tend to kind of avoid it. So, common um, problem. yeah, it's a co very common problem with CRM implementations is, you know, like how can we actually get people to use it and make it so it's useful for, uh, you know, the marketing teams and the sales teams that are kind of like making strategic decisions. So our you whole goal is to make that much, much more accessible. Yeah, and that brings up an interesting point because we all know that CRM usage pretty much sucks for a lot of companies. <laughs> so right. um, I might ask Ken, you know, what? how did your CRM database change? I mean, did you find now you had a lot more data? And and I guess, I don't know if you'd call it CRM adoption because they're not, they're using CRM, but they're kind of using something else. But so what did, how did that change for you? Yeah, so, you know, we first implemented it, um, you know, years ago, about three years ago, we saw a 30% increase in CRM usage by implementing Badger. Um, and as we built out, you know, some more training modules around how to use the technology, I would say that 30% increase probably went up to, you know, well above 50%. And Wow. A couple, you know, a couple of factors I think that just played into that was it was now, like you mentioned, a lot easier than it ever was before. 
to get this information into the system, right? <laughs> Utilizing the lipstick on the pig, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, let's move on. Let's see some of the other goodies. All right, cool. All right, I'll go ahead and close this. So, yeah, so just to kind of recap, you know, big deal here is, you know, being able to visualize customers on the map. Um, and this works for both numeric and text. Um, I didn't show uh, text fil filters here, but if I go to, let's say, specialty on the map, and I'll go ahead and reset my filters here so that I'm not currently filtering by. Oh, yeah, and one thing to mention with the, the filters there is that they can be combined, right? So you can filter by multiple different subjects. So if you have, if you want to really kind of dial things in, uh, you can do that. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, this is what this is what it looks like if you have a text filter enabled. Um, you have your little um, legend here on the left-hand side, and then you can see everything colorized on the map here. So we'll go ahead and turn that off for now, and we'll just go go down to accounts. Uh, this is just an easy way to see all of your accounts, right? You can search for things. If I want to search for um, somebody, let's say an Alex or Alexandria or Alexandra, um, I can go ahead and do that here. I can also, if I if I want to see, you know, like one one kind of issue with having everybody um, on the map here is that I can't just immediately see, you know, like who these customers are, like what their names are, right? So I can just go ahead and click on the map here. And then I can see all these customers or potential customers on the map here sorted by distance, right? So I can actually see who is, you know, closest to me and who I might want to meet with based on, on my personal location, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yeah. So I'm going to jump over to places here. Places is basically like uh, we, a lot of our customers use it for lead search, right? So um, let's say, you know, we wanted to uh, search for dentists nearby for curry that's especially relevant. Um, you know, we can go ahead and tap on a location here and uh, see whether or not they're open, their phone number, their website. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can find a dentist that is open. So wait a minute. So you, this is this is now beyond what the CRM data is. This is, hey, this these could be new potential customers. These are brand new leads. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of our customers. So let's say you know. Ken was talking before about how um, you know you could you could be have a meeting schedule with a customer, and it falls through. Right, it happens all the time. Uh, the lead search, you know, is just kind of like an besides being able to see your own accounts around you, you can potentially find other leads around you that you might you know stop in by or give a call, and just find out whether or not you know this it's it's a better way of kind of right. filling your time based on location. Right, so you can just see who's around you and and kind of and some of the stuff like it depends on the location, but you can see their schedule, so you can see whether or not they're open right now and stuff like that. So I'll add to that, Jimmy, if you don't mind, and Nancy, that you know some of the ways that I've seen this used is with that create new place that you can see there at the bottom of the list under places. Um, you know, you can actually enter some things in there, like uh, for example, a dentist open on Friday. And uh, it'll actually scrub that information if they have their hours posted within Google to display accounts that are open on Friday. So that's a uh, you know that's a big deal and a really powerful powerful tool in itself. Um, yeah. And and also like you know when you're when you're trying to couple up with the routing, one of the things that is often done in medical practice of of any nature with any company is you know setting lunch and learns. So sometimes you know you can only get their attention over lunch, as you know, and if you're building a route with this and you switch over to places to look for some you know things like if you switch on the food filter um, or again it's customizable so you can put something like Starbucks in there um, you could actually plan that into your route by selecting the pinpoints on the map and adding that to your route and it'll actually map that out within your daily plan yeah that's great yeah it's really cool and you'll see a couple of, like if let's say you you go to this location right and you find that they're a good fit and uh, you have a great meeting and you want to add them to your accounts right so that you can search for them and stuff like that you just click add at the top here and you can uh, it'll automatically fill in uh, the details for that location and then if you have any other stuff that you learned in your meeting you can go ahead and fill that out in the the fields that you have available to you okay and then that goes into your CRM Correct, um, and it depends, you know, right? We have customers with a CRM or without. Um, it, this allows you to Badger allows you to be flexible. You can either, um, if you're just relying on Badger, you know, you can. It would just add to your accounts in Badger. That's a good point. So, 
you don't even have to have a CRM. No, no. I mean, and I'm sure a lot of your customers do, but you don't have to. Exactly, exactly. So Curve, for instance, is a CRM integration, right? We, you know, because not everybody in their company is going to be, it, Badger's not relevant to them, right? You know, like if you're if you're in an inside marketing team and you want to be able to use the CRM to be able to figure out kind of, uh, you know, what products are doing well, what products aren't, you know, so on and so forth, Badger's not going to be the right tool for that individual. They're going to want to query the uh, their CRM. So, um, you know, it's it's not good for, um, you know, every every use there. So, you know, their internal team is, is it's going to be more appropriate for them to, to do that. But there's a lot of teams that we have that are, um, they, they don't need kind of like the, they don't, they're not like huge uh, corporations, right? They don't have uh, super large field sales teams. And they can, you know, use Badger almost as their, their primary source of uh, entering and uh, managing their data in the field. Okay. All right, we have a little less than 10 minutes left. And... I'm thinking it'd be really cool to see what the route functionality looks like. But yeah, feel free absolutely. if there's something else you feel like you need to show first. Sure. No, I think I think the routing is kind of one of the coolest features of Badger. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go through that real quick. I'll go ahead and turn off places here. And this is one of the new features that we're just adding to uh, the iPad app. Um, we currently have this in the web app, and this uh, the lasso is going to be released. Uh, for uh, the iPad in the next uh, week or so. Uh, but what you can do is you can go ahead and just circle, you know, the points that you want to visit on the map, right? Mm -hmm. And it automatically pulls them in and you can see all the people that you just selected here in the little lasso tool. Okay. And I can do a few things with the lasso. I can go ahead and mass update things. So let's say I know for all the people in this region that, like, I could be a manager, right? I want to, like, reassign these to a new rep. I can do that by going to this mass update field and updating yeah. those accounts. Let's say also that you know I know that they're you know I want to prioritize them and I want to change their priority to the top priority. I can do that with that as well. Um, that's with, cool. That's really cool. Um, but I can also create a route, right? So if I know that I want to visit all the people in this region, or at least potentially visit all the people in this region, I can go ahead and click create route right here, and it'll automatically uh, drop them into here, and I can see that the route was created on the map. If I go ahead and optimize, um, it'll give me an optimized route for all those uh, all those individuals. Hmm. And it's really easy. When I'm in the field, I can go ahead and click start, and it'll take me into what we call route mode. And uh, on your tablet, it just focuses on that route. It takes everybody else off the map, and you can go through. You can see uh, you know the text directions right here. But you can also navigate using your favorite navigation tool. So whether or not you use Apple Maps or Google Maps or Waze, right, you can navigate uh, using each one of those just by clicking the button next to here. And you can go through each one of your appointments just by tapping the next button. And it'll just kind of take you through your day. So a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, do their route planning and everything like that, you know, the night before or they do it on Sunday or something like that before their week starts. So mm -hmm. this allows you to plan all those routes, and then during the week you just load the route and then uh, tap start and go into route mode, and you you can just focus on uh, your customers. And if you click on their name or tap on their name, you can then see the account details while you're in route mode. Um, you can create check-ins for those customers. Um, it makes it really easy to kind of dial in. So there's so there's two sides of Badger, right? Like there's when you're doing the research, and when you're doing the planning, and then there's the execution side, right? when you're actually out in the field and you're visiting customers. So we try and serve both sides of that. You know, when you're out in the field, you want to be really focused on uh, the customers that you're visiting, and route mode allows you to, to really do that. Let me ask Ken a question about this, because I mean, route planning is important, and if you have a couple of appointments or one or however many that fall through, there's there's a lot of things that can affect the productivity of a wrap out in the field. So I'm just curious if you have any kind of metrics, Ken, in terms of how much more productive it has made your reps, or maybe has it changed the number of meetings that they've had? Yeah, so I don't 
you know, that's hard to quantify from a metric standpoint because we don't know when things are falling through every day, you know, as a sales manager. But if I was to, you know, take a stab at it, I'd tell you <laughs> over 100% increase in efficiency. And uh, that simply comes to the fact that, you know, if something falls through and you have a plan, you know, do you always have a backup plan, right? And that question comes into play. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of times the answer is, you know, I, I might have had a backup plan, but it's not in this geography. So what do you do? You know, you look in, <laughs> you look around, you drive down the street, and you try to see who you remember in the area or refer to your spreadsheet, but you don't have to do that anymore. Um, because, like, you know, even this lasso feature that Jimmy's just introducing now, um, I can see how this is going to be wonderful in terms of, hey, you know, here I am in, uh, let's call it Central Florida, and I want to put a lasso on the area that I'm at. You know, now that gives me some targets and I can apply filters and start to weed through them to figure out, you know, if I want those to be part of the route or not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would definitely say that, you know, if I was to tie something to it, it would be incredibly more efficient than, you know, what we've had in place prior to this. And we're, how, are you able to figure out, like, how many more new meetings your reps are going on now versus calling on, you know, existing accounts? Do you do any sort of yeah. data analytics? Yeah, so, I mean, if I was to take a, um, you know, I would be in a standard deviation here if, if I gave you a hard number, but I would say that on average we're seeing at least two more accounts a day um, and uncovering at least two more opportunities that we have not, you know, been either A, introduced to or haven't had engagement with through the use of Badger. Wow, okay. Well, that's, this is really cool stuff and I again really appreciate Ken that you took the time out you know as a customer it actually actually says a lot about Badger because you know it's it's hard for people to get customers to to jump in and take some time out of their day so thank you appreciate that and Jimmy for taking thank us through well. how, how it works um, I guess um, so I just want to let people know if you know, we, there's probably a lot more that they that you have that you, they can see, you can demo, and you can talk to them about. So, um, is there a number that they should call? Should they just fill out a form on your website, Jimmy? What do you ex uh, suggest if people want to learn more? Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple places um, we're happy to take phone calls. You can give us a call at 415-592-5909. Um, we take support very seriously, so you know we're uh, we're happy to explain things over the phone. Um, you can also learn more on our website on badgermapping.com, and that allows you to uh, learn a little bit more. We have like a demo video that kind of takes you through all the features of the app. Um, it's basically it's me <laughs> just talking through uh, things in you know kind of a lot of detail, right? Like when we're doing a demo over you know this webinar. Um, you know, it's it's a little harder to kind of like hit every every feature, right? So yeah. that video just kind of takes you through everything in detail, but it's still not too long. I, I still try and keep it tight, and it's only about 12 minutes long to kind of really uh, train a rep. Um, but you, yeah, you can also go to the support page on our website. Um, we allow you to schedule a phone call with one of our uh, our reps that allows you to um, schedule a training session or anything like that. And you can sign up for a free trial. Uh, we uh, have a three-week free trial because um, uh, we really better. want people to, yeah, we want people to, you know, realize the value in it. Okay. Excellent. Good. Well, perfect timing because we are now officially out of time. Uh, thank you again, <laughs> both of you. And thanks for all of you who joined us today. I hope you can join us again next week, Thursday at 11 o'clock. Again, you can uh, sign up on our website. And uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy.